that's better. Anyways, happy 10 o'clock in the morning. And for your reference, we're gonna be skipping around editing wise, cause goddamn this is difficult and I understand why all you people just skip around your cuts on YouTube constantly. So don't hate me if things jump a little bit, okay? Fuck you. I like collecting film gear. I don't shoot videos very much, but I do like collecting gear because it's just kind of fun to think that if I needed to capture something on video, it would look cinematic. Anyways, one of the things that plagues the indie film scene is budgets and money and buying equipment and you guys always get caught up in buying more, better things, the next camera, the next gimbal, all that. But I've been using the Zion Crane 2 for a long time now and I really enjoy it. I think a lot of you guys have this exact one and it's a great little model. The Crane 2 is very popular amongst indie filmmakers because it's affordability. I think it retails around the $500 range. Uh, nowadays, they'll come with a very nice follow focus servo motor. And what this does is electrically mate with a cable to the rest of the gimbal so that you can use this wheel and uh, pull your focus while you're using the gimbal. That's a must for when you're being very mobile. For standard practice of filmmaking, it's pretty common to have somebody else running the focus pulling for you. They'd be, usually be monitoring uh, wirelessly, looking at the video feed to see where the focus is. So what they would have is a wireless focus pulling solution. And people have been conned into buying that uh, Nucleus uh, Tilta. It's $250 and that's bullshit because they probably make it for around I'm gonna guess $20 in parts. It's, they all operate the same way. It's usually Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or, you know, like a 2.4 gigahertz signal. It, you could spend $250 on it because it has a nice little wood finish and stuff, but if you wanted to use the standalone, you cannot use this motor when it's not attached to the gimbal. Zion did not implement a wireless chip into the motor itself and it would just kind of be nice to always have a focus puller available. So I'm gonna dive into how I reverse engineered this motor and it'll be pretty light, not too technical. Uh, but if you'd like to do it yourself, you can skip into later this video because I'll show, be showing you how to make one of these yourself. The end result will be a nice application that'll be in the app store ready for you guys. All you have to do is open the app, turn on the motor, Connect to it wirelessly with Bluetooth, and look at that, the motor's spinning. I do, have, I do have to clarify, I have not figured out how to code this in Xcode just yet. I don't have a Mac computer, because <laughs> what do I look like, an art major? <laughs> Come on. I do not have an application ready for iPhone. This is Android only currently. If you wanted to build one of these units yourself, you can pick up the parts for around a total of $38. Compared to 250, that's pretty damn good. I found one of these on e one of these motors standalone on eBay. <laughs> oh fuck! Uh, eBay will have those for around 27 dollars, free shipping. Uh, we're going to use an HM10 Bluetooth module, and we're going to use a pack of two micro USB cables that we'll splice into, make a little connector, and I hope to God you have some kind of level of soldering skills. So what we're going to be doing on an analysis standpoint is connecting our motor to the crane and with this cable attached, we're going to solder some little probes onto the, cir the main circuit board for this motor and we're going to see what we find and if anything looks interesting to us, we'll take that and run with it and see if we can mimic this. The end result will be delete this whole wire so we don't need it and attach our Bluetooth module to Bluetooth. That's a tablet to our tablet to send the commands that this guy was originally sending. I've already probed this connector 
typically you'll have two power lines and then you have three other connections for for uh, whatever you want on a micro USB. I've mapped this side I think to the ground and this side to the five volts or vice versa, I don't remember. It's up to you, who fucking cares? <clears throat> so I've found this connection to be a ground point, so that's great, I put a solder bead on there and I've also put a solder bead on this exact test point. This leads into our main CPU and if you look up the data sheet for the CPU, you'll find this is actually a uh, serial reading line for this IC. This IC is an MP5636 and it drives the brushless motor inside which turns the gearbox and that's why you get such impressive torque out of this is because of the gearing system. I've labeled this one ground. You want to be very careful not to overheat a lot of this. And there's our other one. So this seems like every 20 milliseconds it's sending some sort of packet of data from the gimbal to the motor. They're spaced out pretty evenly. Only these two bits are, or only these four bytes seem to be changing. So let's take our sample that we got in pulse view and throw the bytes into uh, a UART analysis for normal serial communication. You can see that we have a list of hex data here, which is a great sign. And it kind of verifies that it's operating at the baud rate of uh, 115,200. I'm going to throw that into Google Sheets and grab those couple bytes that were changing, throw them into a new tab, and then use hex to des to get a list of decimal readings. From there we're going to create a plot and see, hey, this kind of just looks like a number floating between 0 and 255. Uh, and that's a good sign, that's easy to emulate. Looks like this other column here uh, of, of two bytes Actually, it's just a CRC calculation for uh, bit checking the packets that get received by the motor. And that's pretty easy to emulate too, as long as you know the algorithm. So there's a lot of existing tutorials on how to change the baud rate of the HM10 Bluetooth module. A lot of them are going to step through them a little better than I will, they'll have more patience than I do. The uh, best interface, I think, is still the Arduino COM interface. So once you connect your module to your UART adapter using the RXTX ground and power pins, you can go into your serial port and use the following commands. AT baud 4 to set it to 15, 115,200 baud rate. And I'm just doing a check that it's saved. And that's all you need to do. If you don't want the down angle adapters like this one, turned out a little bit ugly, but they came in a pack of two, which was nice. You can find these right angle adapters for pretty damn cheap, and these will come in two packs as well. After we change the baud rate of our Bluetooth module chip to 115,200 on the computer, we can just snip off the RX pin that's right there. We're not gonna need it, so there's no point in keeping it around. So we'll just snip it off all the way. We have to do a little trick to provide power to our Bluetooth module, so we're actually going to steal power from the upper USB port. He's just a pass-through for data to go towards the camera. So if I were to lay it out, we're going to take our USB port, take the 5 volts and the negative from this guy, and this will be injecting our transmit pin from our Bluetooth module. We're going to interface these with the provided little connectors that they provide. So this one turned out a little bit ugly. I'm not too worried about it because it's not for me, it's for somebody else. So it's not my problem. But here we go, we got the two wired. Uh, I used some heat shrink in between to kind of couple them together just so they'd stick. Obviously you can do this a lot prettier if you wanted. I think the original one I did turned out pretty well. This wire was just kind of on a loosely dangling wire uh, here. So he is pretty loose, but 
it, it's a little more flexible. I think there's got to be a way to pretty this up, but I'm not too worried about it. The last step you want to do is just put some Velcro pads on the bottom of your transmitter and receiver. So that way, when you have your motor, you can just stick them on and remove it whenever you want to. Alright, that way we can plug this into the side port. This one's got a label of a camera symbol on it for the pass-through. Plug the bottom USB in and stick our Bluetooth receiver on top. When we actually hit the power button, he's going to initialize and power on. He'll be scanning for a connection to hook to and if nothing comes into play and this unit does not receive any signals within I think five seconds you'll see he'll turn off automatically which is kind of nice but a little bit stressful so let's open up our app apply power we're going to really quickly scan and connect to it got a little connection status and there we go so I spin the wheel you'll see it's working so I've implemented both a sensitivity slider and a reverse slider for directionals. That way you can keep things consistent. Now it's just a matter of you mounting this onto your camera and calling it a day.